Thank you for the opportunity to speak today on uh, the phase three study results of 177 lutetium PSMA 617 in patients with metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer be recently presented in published vision trial. I'm Dr. Daniel George, professor of medicine and surgery and co-lead of the Duke Cancer uh, Center for Prostate and Urologic Cancers. These are my disclosures listed here. And just a quick summary on 177 lutetium PSMA. It's a targeted radioligand therapy uh, shown in this insert. You can see it's a um, has a beta particle emission of 177 lutetium that's tied to uh, the P that binds to PSMA through a small molecule PSMA 617 that results in the um, endocytosis of this um, complex into the cell into the nucleus where it causes DNA damage. Uh, and cell death. And um, it's by this mechanism that uh, this drug was developed specifically for patients with advanced stage prostate cancer. The pivotal trial uh, is shown here in eligible patients included those who had um, metastatic castration resistant disease with prior treatment with both at least one antrin receptor pathway inhibitor, as well as one or two taxane regimens. Um, patients were um, then allowed to maintain on uh, the standard of care of uh, therapy uh, for that space at that time, excluding chemotherapy, immunotherapy, radium, or investigational drugs. They had have good performance status, a life expectancy greater than six months. And importantly, they had to have a positive PSMA scan um, with at least one lesion showing uptake greater than the liver background uptake by gallium-68 PSMA-11. Patients were then randomized two to one to receive either open label uh, 177 lutetium or um, uh, just standard of care practice. Um, and the lutetium was given uh, every six weeks for four cycles, increased uh, to six cycles if tolerated. And following treatment, patients were followed uh, for radiographic progression, as well as toxicity and tolerance, and ultimately for survival. The primary endpoints included radiographic progression, free survival, and overall survival. I'm not going to go into the statistics for this study, um, but uh, these were alternate uh, endpoints, not co-primary. Uh, 1,179 patients were screened by PSMA PET scan. 1,000 were positive and met the criteria. You can see, or I'm sorry, 1,000 underwent PET scan imaging, and you can see about 86% had positive PSMA by these criteria mentioned and 831 were randomized. Uh, the study started enrollment in June of 2018. And unfortunately, after about 240 or 50 patients, we, um, we saw a uh, early dropout of uh, about a third of patients uh, in, um, I'm sorry, uh, about, about half the patients, 56% of the patients in the standard of care arm dropping out uh, early. Uh, because of the open label nature of this and opting for other treatment modalities. And so in March of 2019, some implementation of um, some enhanced study education and communication and uh, site selection was done in order to enhance the uh, compliance with this, this study and the standard of care arm. And because of that, then there were really two study populations evaluated. The study population for radiographic progression-free survival, which was um, the RPFS analysis has started in March, 2019, and the overall uh, all, uh, survival for all randomized patients uh, was evaluated as well. And the study finished enrollment in October, 2019. These are the baseline characteristics for the population. And, and you can see they're relatively balanced at about a median age of, of 70, 71. You can see a uh, uh, predominantly white population. Again, like many studies, we, we have an underrepresentation of uh, Black and Asian patients in this study. Uh, most patients, 90%, were good performance status. And the sites of disease were predominantly bone, but uh, in lymph node, uh, with a, a relatively small proportion of lung and liver metastasis. Um, all the patients had uh, one prior taxane or androgen, and you can see that on median number uh, was one, but there was quite a range for patients out to three or four uh, treatments and patients who had received um, more than one androgen receptor pathway inhibitor were balanced between the populations, including the randomized, including the overall population and the RPFS uh, analysis set. 
So looking at the primary endpoints, this is the overall survival for the overall population. And as you can see here, these curves separate early. They stay separate throughout the population. They remain separate even after the lutetium PSMA 16, 617 therapy has completed um, and uh, results in an overall improvement in survival with a hazard ratio of 0.62, a very significant p-value and, and tight confidence intervals, and an improvement at the median uh, for the populations from 11.3 months to 15.3 months. If you look here at just the subset of patients uh, who uh, started the study for the uh, radiographic progression-free survival analysis, that's 581 patients, the curves are very similar. Uh, and, and overall, we see a similar hazard ratio of 0.62, again, a, about a four-month four improvement in median overall survival. Likewise, when we look at the primary endpoint for radiographic progression-free survival, we see um, a, a clear separation of these curves. Uh, at two months, both curves drop down. Uh, but much more so in the standard of care arm. By, by four months, 70% uh, of the standard of care arm has progressed radiographically. Um, but we see a, a clear change in that demarcation with the, um, with the lutetium uh, PSMA arm with uh, in a, a wide separation here for the vast majority of this population extending out um, and uh, an improvement at the median of from just 3.4 months median RPFS to 8.7 months, really a completion of the uh, lutetium PSMA treatment course. And uh, this resulted in a hazard ratio of 0 0.40, a p-value less than 0 0.01. Similarly, when we apply this to the overall uh, population, the curves look very similar. So there, there really wasn't a, a significant treatment effect from that early dropout rate. And, and overall, we still see a, a dramatic change in the radiographic progression of this disease. When we look at um, objective responses, this is a subset of patients. It's only about 25% of uh, the population. But what you can see is a clear shift over uh, in favor of the lutetium PSMA 617 population, where the vast majority of patients had some evidence of either stable disease, partial response, or even complete response in their, in their measurable lesions. And, and a really remarkable 42% uh, uh, you know, partial response and another 9.2% uh, complete response for a, an overall response rate of over 50%. Uh, compare that then to standard of care where we saw only just 3% partial response and no complete responses. It's a, it's a dramatic shift um, as you can see by these bar graphs. And likewise by PSA, we see um, in, in all comers a, a dramatic difference um, in the PSA response uh, with, a, with the majority of patients receiving lutetium PSMA 617 having a PSA response uh, of some sort, and 46% um, having a 50% or greater decline in PSA from baseline, and, and 80%, I mean, 33% of patients having an 80% decline in PSA um, uh, or greater. And compare that again to our standard of care, where it was just 7.1% and 2% respectively. Again, a, a dramatic difference in the, the um, effect of this treatment. Um, there are side effects associated with it. When we look at all grades uh, for uh, lutetium, 85% of patients had at least some treatment emergent uh, AEs, and, and, but only 9.3% were serious. And, and I find in this patient population that result is encouraging. It was, it was um, for grade three to five toxicities, 8% versus 2.4% for standard of care and 28% uh, overall for um, grade, um, uh, grade three to five uh, treatment emergent adverse events. When we look at those particular events, a few stand out. Fatigue in particular um, uh, stands out here. Uh, about half the patients with fatigue associated with this radionuclide therapy and 7% and grade three to five. Bone marrow suppression as well. This is a heavily pretreated population. 47% had some bone marrow suppression. You can see the breakdown, mostly with anemia, but some thrombocytopenia and leukopenia. Um, the, the results of grade three to five were more much lower, but we still see about 13% of patients with grade three anemia requiring transfusions, about 5% in our standard of care. So some of that is the natural history of this disease. Dry mouth is a known toxicity related to this um, approach uh, with PSMA activity present in the salivary glands and consequently 39% of patients, 
develop that uh, and also had some low grade nausea and vomiting. Um, thankfully, these were almost all low grade events. There's a, a small degree of some renal effects. 3.4% were grade three to five versus 2.9 in standard of care. So fairly similar there. Most of this is low grade from the drug um, and other toxicity shown here. So in conclusion, I think the vision study demonstrated in a heavily pretreated population, PSMA enriched by, by PET scan, that lutetium PSMA 617 demonstrated both clinically and statistically significant improvement in overall survival, radiographic progression-free survival, PSA, and objective responses. And overall, uh, 177 PSMA lutetium was well tolerated in this disease setting. Um, and these vision results to me justify the regulatory approval of 177 lutetium PSMA 16. I hope you all agree. Thank you very much.